Hey gang, I'm Dr. Ian Hunt, the Chief of Acquisitions here at the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library Museum, and I'm very excited to tell you about our newest acquisition, a March the 26th, 1843 letter written by Abraham Lincoln to Martin S. Morris of Petersburg, Illinois. Now, in the spring of 1843, Abraham Lincoln found himself at a crossroads in his life. After four successful terms in the Illinois legislature, he decided to set his sights on a new horizon. He wanted to transition from being simply an Illinois regional candidate to being one on a national scope. So he sought out his party's nomination to represent the seventh Illinois congressional district in the U.S. House of Representatives. Now, unfortunately for Mr. Lincoln that spring, several strong candidates would also emerge for the Whig party. One of those being John J. Hardin, a military veteran who had been a hero during the Black Hawk War, uh, and Edward Baker, who was considered one of the best orators of Sangamon County. Now, in March of 1843, the Sangamon County Whig leadership would come together here in Springfield and would decide that Edward Baker should be the nominee rather than Lincoln or Hart. And they directed their delegates to throw all of the support of Sangamon County behind Baker. This was a huge disappointment to Abraham Lincoln, who believed that he had the support to win in Sangamon County. Six days after that decision, Abraham Lincoln would sit down to pen a letter to his friend Martin Morris, who he had known from his time in, in New Salem. Morris had actually been a blacksmith. About the time that Mr. Lincoln makes the move to Springfield, Morris had moved to Petersburg, Illinois, which had recently been named the county seat for Menard County. Morris himself had climbed up through the ranks of the Whig Party in Menard County and was now one of its delegates. In Mr. Lincoln's letter, he talked about how, even though the people of Sangamon County had cast him off, that he was heartened by the people of Menard County, who had known him the longest and the best of any, that they still would support him. He laughed and pointed out that the friendless, uneducated, penniless boy who had arrived on a flatboat for $10 a month 12 years earlier was now in Springfield being classified as the candidate of pride, wealth, and aristocratic family distinction. He talked about how the church had been used against him, how his lack of belonging to a specific church had been pointed out by others. He even talked about how his failed duel with James Shields had been used against him. Throughout the remainder of the letter, Mr. Lincoln talks about how the various counties will likely vote for Hardin, others will likely vote for Baker, and that Menard County certainly had the right to vote for whoever they wanted. He talks a lot about that if Mr. Baker for some reason were to have to drop out of the race, then Lincoln would happily accept the nomination and would happily represent the state of Illinois in Congress, but that he didn't think that that would happen. Now, ironically, in the end, of course, neither Baker or Lincoln ends up winning the election. It's Hardin out of Jacksonville who is sent off to represent the Illinois 7th Congressional District. Two years later, Edward Baker would have his opportunity, and two years after that, Mr. Lincoln would finally have his. The period between 1843 and 1848 is a remarkable time in Abraham Lincoln's life. After leaving the Illinois General Assembly after four successful terms, he will not only attempt to get into Congress, but he will also marry Mary Todd. He will begin a family. He will purchase the only home that he will ever own, the house that sits at 8th and Jackson Street today. He will enter into a new law partnership with William Herndon, and he will continue to cultivate his speaking abilities, campaigning on behalf of fellow Whig candidates and spending 1844 campaigning on behalf of Henry Clay, who was running for the presidency. This letter is remarkable for several reasons. Not only does it display Mr. Lincoln's angst at being passed over for a position that he felt that he was supremely prepared for, but the letter itself had not been seen by historians since it had been written in 1843. Now in 1866, a copy was made of this letter and that copy found its way to the Library of Congress, but the original handwritten Lincoln manuscript had remained within the Morris family until generously donated just a few weeks ago by his descendants who now live in Washington State. We cannot thank the Terry family enough for their generosity at giving us this incredible gift and letting us make it available to the people of the world. 
If you'd like to learn more about this artifact and this remarkable time in Lincoln's life, I would invite you to come down and visit us here at the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library Museum.